what do you attribute? I mean, ten and nine—that's kind of incredible to be in in games that they show by double digits. Why do you think this program has been so successful in uh, coming back from those type of situations? Just the way we prepare, just the way we prepare doing count, we prepare for games like this. See, we kind of figure that. See, uh, we, we know we got talent, but it's just gonna be those games that we gotta. You know, dig deep. We that's definitely not a position that we want to be in, but we put ourselves in that position. Not like busted coverage is not playing up that standard, so we had to fight back. What what in camp specifically? You said you know that's something that's developed in camp. What do you guys do there? I think the, the days, the 12, 13 days straight in pads. Really, that's that was one of the things. Just two a days at the end, just put. Uh, the people, the guys that push themselves, like me, when I push myself, when I know I was like tired and hurting and going, uh, dealing with a little bit of pain, just pushing myself through it. Jimbo, uh, especially the beginning and middle part of camp, was, I don't want to say questioning the team's mental toughness, but wanted to see it to be a little bit stronger. As a team, did you guys feel like you needed to be a little bit mentally tougher too? As far as in the game or in camp? In camp. Yeah, we definitely did. I mean, so at one point we let the heat get to us, the, the, bad, the bad days get mm -hmm. to us. But so Demarcus did a great job, you know, leading the team and just pushing us when he was tired. When he was tired, and then kind of trick it down. And then in the game, did you still did you feel like no, you guys ever lacked that, that type of time? Didn't flinch. Mm -hmm. Didn't flinch, man. Us, uh, we came in halftime. Coach Fisher, uh jumped on the people needed to jump on. I was one of the ones he jumped on. I picked my game up. Uh, and it went from there. We never, we never felt. I know I never felt like we. we I just knew that we just had to come out and just get the momentum back. They had a good, they had the momentum in the beginning, and they came out and executed their game plan as far as the tempo, going really fast. So we got, came out and got that first stop. Marcus got the pick. That's when uh, everything flipped. There's something to be said, you know, a lot of teams, every, every team will say, you know, they never feel like they're out of a game, they can always come back, but I mean, you guys, you know it, you can look back at, at that example or other examples and say, we came back from three touchdowns down, is there something about, good about having that in the back of your mind? Uh, I think it's a bad thing, what <laughs> Switzer said today, it's a curse. We're talented, and we know that we go fight to the end. Uh, we just gotta not put ourselves in those positions. We made it a lot harder than the game was supposed to be. Hats off the old Miss. It was good. They had great receivers. I had a great time battling with those guys. But uh, I definitely feel like we was the better team, and we just didn't show it in the first half. In 2014, when we would ask, nobody really had a good answer as to why you guys would struggle so early in the beginning of games. Is there anything that you guys have talked about or things you guys feel like you can do to prevent that in 2016? I think it was just the first game, too. That's really what I think it was. And I doubt, like, I don't I don't see us having that performance anymore for the rest of the season. So it, whether it's Charles and Southern or Louisville, whoever we play, we just got to come out and just jump on them. That's what we lack. I, I wouldn't even say we came out flat. I, I feel like everybody came out ready to play. This whole Miss on offense, they came out and executed a game plan. So mm -hmm. they wanted, uh, I don't feel like teams can beat us unless they go tempo and they attack that. They do a good job with that. Did, did you feel like you guys ever did find a good answer as to why you had to have so many comebacks in 2014 or that was still like an unsolved? I think it's just sim being a seminal, being unconquered. I mean, you just don't want to lose. Not the fear of losing, but you just know once you get just, it's like, I guess a light just clicked. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of guys on Ole Miss. It was uh, going before we went to halftime. The last time they scored, it was like, it's over. When the line was like, uh, it's over for y'all, or something like that. Really? I, like, I, was, I remember him saying, all I said was, like, oh, okay. That's what I said. And uh -huh. we came back the second half, ready to play. I meant more about the line than after the, after the game? No. <laughs> okay. Not really. He got quiet. We didn't really need up. to. When we went up, he wasn't really saying too much. So. I mean, more like in 2014, did you ever find out as to why you guys would keep falling behind and, and struggling in the games? Or Oh, just the way, yeah, the way we start our practice. We start our practice slow. I mean, it's just like, again, what Swiss said all the time. We just really got to take heed of what he say. We just really take it serious. Uh, when we start practice all slow and then pick it up after the break, I mean, that's how the, that's kind of how the game goes. It's gotcha. like we start off the first half slow and then after half time, we pick it up. Gotcha. Did, did, did Marcus and, and Tavares, did they have some, you mentioned pregame jitters. Were those two guys that maybe kind of had to get settled in a little bit? Yeah, they did. Even me, I had a little, had a little jitters. I mean, and they kind of showed up. Busted the covers probably out of the first or second play of the game. And that definitely wasn't my my best game. I mean, I played. I think I played horrible. But those two guys, they growed up a lot that game. I mean, Tavares, he gave a couple touchdowns early. And I know me and Derwin, we stayed on. Like, but we believe in you. Like, you can play. You a baller. Just go out and make the next play. And we, that's one thing we try to stress. Elijah's moving on to the next play. We made up for it. 
for you, I mean, you, you have a year of experience. So, like, if you have a slow start, you can at least draw back. For those guys, I mean, were they kind of freaking out when, when things didn't go well early? Or? Two-time, he did kind of get going a hold a little bit. But that's kind of just his personality because he's so hard on himself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of the same way, but I had to grow out of that, and that's what he had to do. That's so when I say they grow up a lot, him and Marcus that game, I mean, they grow up. I'm just ready to see how the strides that they made over the course of the season, how much better they'll get. When you see those guys jumping up and down after these interceptions, man, even Daryl too, when he had his, you know, what's that like for you? Uh, uh, I was tired, so I couldn't <laughs> even really get a, a, a celebrate, but I was I was excited on the inside. But yeah, man, we, we worked so hard. We worked very hard as a secondary and as a, as a defensive unit. Uh, it's always, I'm always excited to see them guys make plays. What do you think goes into those jitters at the end? Is it just you just having a hit yet, or is it? I, mean, like, I just uh, like first game of the season, prime time. Not really nervous for the moment, but just not really knowing what to expect. We have prepared for so many different things, and then uh, they come out of empty, and we haven't had to adjust to it. So the halftime adjustments was big, but uh, just big moments, and I feel like we stepped up and, and made the plays we needed to, and that's what we do there. You said a few more. Two guys like. Marcus and T-Time growing up, but what was it like to see them kind of take that leap in addition to guys like DeAndre and Ricky and kind of see like these yeah. young guys who are first year starters kind of coming into their own? Yeah, it's no, it's no age on being a leader or being a starter or being a contributor. Um, those guys came to play. You know, they, like I said, my guys, in the they kind of started off slow, but then they eventually settled into the game. That's what it took for them, and they balled out. They had a great game. I mean, is it hard or easy to kind of, I guess, get to that point on this team? Because it seems like with so many established guys, it, it'd be normal to kind of wait your turn. But is there kind of an open invitation of it doesn't matter if you're a freshman or senior, step up when you can? Yeah, my spot, definitely not safe. I feel like, just like I say all the time, my spot not safe. If Vante go challenge me every day to come out and compete and work, work hard to keep my spot. I mean, and it's like that all across the board, whether it's at safety, DN, you got guys like Brian Burns is really good. You know, Pew is really good. And like I said, there's no, there's no age on really being a, a baller. What's that like when Levante's come in playing that two spot like that, man? I know he could be a little pesky. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's he's a competitor. That's what it's about, though. It's about competition. Competition brings the best out of me, out of him, out of everybody. And uh, I'm going to do my job as a senior to get him prepared. I mean, we, we work together. I don't feel like it's like a, a selfish thing, man. It's the best players go play. and. I need that. I need that, that push. He's a great player. He's gonna be a great player. Gonna make a lot of plays here, and I'm excited to just watch him develop. DeAndre taking those hits in the pocket and still delivering the football. What did that do as far as um, maybe galvanizing the team around him? Yeah, I mean, just showing that he he wants to win. Uh, he play. I feel like he played well under under the pressure that he was under. It was a big game. He didn't really. I feel like he blocked out. All the distractions around them. Just, I just know, just being at practice, Coach Fisher is the hardest. Like, it's nothing like playing with Coach Fisher right in your ear. <laughs> so I know the game. It, the moment wasn't too big for him. He did a great job for us, and just looking forward to every game. Do you see those type of catches from Dalvin in, in practice? You know, the hundred yard games and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I mean, he prepares harder than anyone. He prepares harder than a lot of people I know. Um, he works. He works his butt off every day. Kind of practice every day. He's a team player and a leader. So there's no uh, it's no surprise from the way he, he performs on the field. For Chris, how do you go into a game against a team that you know is probably not going to throw very much as a DB? I'm used to that, uh, kind of. Um, just it's going to be a lot of eye jobs this week. Just knowing your assignment and doing your job. That's what I didn't I didn't do the, a good job of. I feel like Monday I didn't do my job as good as I knew how to, as I should. But I'm definitely go take the proper preparation, just prepare the right way this week and be ready on Saturday to dominate. Coach Fisher said today it's kind of like cramming for a test, especially when you play a team like that. Vic, are you having to learn new assignments or things like that? Just guard you, man. That's really what it is. Um, just And just know what they do, know what they like to do out of formation. Just, and I'm going to go home and study the film like I always do. Probably be up late studying the film, try to get a beat, try to get a key on who they try to go to. And like when they try to take their shot, so I mean, Charles Southern is a really good team, and they in uh, Division One AA, uh, they're, they're a great team. So they go come in and challenge us, and they state it's like they Super Bowl, so they go come in ready to play. We good? Yeah. Did you uh, watch the 